Welcome everybody, I'm Marla with Nine Help, and we are back with you today doing our four part series on culinary medicine. So our objective is to really give you information you can use to own your health and be your best in your health journey. So we are here today at the Cook Street School of Culinary Medicine, easy for me to say, and uh, this is a really great place. They've really supported our education series, and it was founded in 1999 and right, right here in Lodo. So it's right in downtown Denver, and they offer um, accelerated professional training programs if you want to have that kind of degree, or just recreational programs if you are interested in just brushing up on your skills. So we are going to cook something very good today, and we're here with Dr. So Jennifer nice. Bolton with um, Metro, Metro State University, so yes. thank you for joining us. You are welcome. Yeah. So last week, just to remind everybody, we did a, a we cooked for heart health because uh, February is heart health month, right? So we cooked for heart health, and we made some beautiful salmon. And uh, that salmon is good for your heart. If you did want the recipe, you can go ahead and check it out. It's on our Facebook page. So go to Facebook or ninehealthfair.org. Today, we are talking about diabetes. And um, it's a really important topic because um, one in three people may have prediabetes and not even know about it. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an epidemic. It is, and I think that one of the concerns we have is that diabetes is really, it has a hereditary um, aspect to it. But one of the biggest problems, one of the drivers of diabetes is being overweight and inactive. Right. And so when That's we, for type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Type 1 diabetes, different Much different, yeah. Um, but type 2 diabetes has hereditary underpinning. Yeah. But the driver really is being overweight and inactive yeah. for so, most people. So that's that's kind of um, what we're talking about all yes. for this whole series is yes. that you know the old adage of you are what you eat. You are what you eat. There's Absolutely. actually scientific evidence now there to is. show us that that's true. There is. Which is why you are teaching this uh, culinary medicine program as part of the lifestyle medicine program. Yes, so we have the lifestyle medicine program. We have the degree in nutrition, a new master's degree in nutrition. And and so we're excited to teach people how to help other people yeah. live more healthfully. Yeah, and we are going to dive into making a uh, fabulous recipe of white beans, kale, and tomatoes. So um, white be bean, kale, tomato, slow cooker soup. Yes. So we've really tried in all of these recipes to focus on what can you do when you're short on time? What tastes delicious? And what can you do when you're short on time? Yeah. I hear that from people all the time. Yeah. I was it's been a little chilly cook. this uh, few days, so the slow cooker, the soup is really going to be good. Mm -hmm. And this is a vegetarian meal. Yes, vegetarian very meal. Important. Yeah, delicious vegetarian meal. And one of the things we're focusing on here is things that are high in fiber. Okay, yes, so beans are high in fiber, is that right? Beans are high in fiber. What else do you have that's high in fiber here? Your carrots are high carrots. in fiber. Your tomatoes are high in fiber. Uh -huh. Your celery is high in fiber. Oh, almost Your everything. kale is high in fiber. Everything we're going to show you is high in fiber. So wow. So yeah. all of these things really can help you with your fiber intake. And why is the fiber so important? So because fiber fills you up, makes you feel more full, you eat less food. Mm -hmm. In addition to the fact that um, fiber, I'm going to turn this down really quickly so we don't burn anything. Um, good, good call. Yeah. In addition, um, fiber also slows down the digestion of carbohydrates. So as we slow down the digestion of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. then um, we are able to have more normal blood glucose mm -hmm. levels. That affects hunger. It also is beneficial for those with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes to have better blood glucose control. Yeah, yeah we talk yeah. a lot about counting carbs when we are talking about diabetes, and yeah. so the fiber is actually going to help us with that. Fiber helps slow down carbohydrate absorption, digestion and absorption. And what that Perfect. does is then makes it a little more normal, slow rise in blood glucose, keeps you full, mm -hmm. slow drop mm -hmm. in blood mm -hmm. glucose. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. So let's dive into our recipe. Okay. You've got a big pot here, but this could also be done in the crock pot, yes? So you have two options. I'm going to show you the first option, which is the pot. So I'm going to do a little bit of oil. This first step is the same no matter whether you're doing it in a slow cooker or you're doing it um, on the stove top. Okay, um, so that, how about how much oil do, is that? A tablespoon of oil. So that's not very much. Not much oil. Okay. And this should serve four to six people. So a tablespoon of oil for four to six people. I'm using five to seven carrots. I've peeled them and cut them up. Um, I got home late last night, made a dinner to happen fast. 
<laughs> so I enlisted the help of my whole family and we were able to peel, I'm a groceries, peel and cut all our vegetables in about four or five minutes. Okay, you're um, fast, that's yeah. good. So five to seven carrots we've got here. Um, we're moving that around. So we're gonna um, saute that a little bit and then we're gonna carrots. put in the celery. We're gonna put in a cup of celery. A cup of celery. Okay, and we're gonna saute that. We're gonna let a lot of um, this saute for seven or eight minutes. Okay. And then once we've sauteed this for seven or eight minutes, we're gonna add our onions and garlic. Okay. Onions and, and our, garlic are good for yeah. what? Why is that so good for us? Oh, we have good uh, antioxidants. All of these, the carrots have antioxidants, the celery has antioxidants. We usually say things, foods with color have lots of antioxidants, but your onions and garlic also have antioxidants. I put my onions in first. I'm saving my garlic for very, very last, my last minute of cooking. Okay. So it doesn't burn. Okay. okay. So that's important little tip. Yeah. So we're with the garlic in last. We're guys. cooking this for seven or eight minutes, one minute with the garlic. And then once this is ready, we make our decision. Um, are we going to do it in the slow cooker? And if so, we're going to dump all the ingredients in okay. the slow cooker. Or if we're going to, are we going to do it on the stove top? And if we're going to do it on the stove top, we're going to leave everything in the pot. Um, and we're going to put in our can of drained, um, no sodium added white beans. So sodium, you, you're talking a little bit about sodium. We know that the beans have fiber, but they can also have uh, sodium when they're in yes. the can. So our canned foods can have sodium. We want to make sure we read no salt added. Okay. Yeah. And why is that important? Is the salt going to hurt our health or what? Tell us about that. Can raise your blood pressure. Okay. Yeah, can raise your blood pressure. And a lot of us have um, eaten so many fast foods, prepared yeah. foods, canned foods, processed foods that our salt meter is relatively high. Mm -hmm. So we think we need all this salt in our food. Oh, you mean our salt meter in terms of our taste buds? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So we think we need more salt when we don't. Okay. So if we can then decrease our salt intake, um, it can help us achieve better blood pressure control and better overall health. Yeah. 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 There's people on here asking about doing Atkins or low carb diets or keto diets. Are yeah. With diabetes, is that effective? So um, the short answer to a really big question, we could do a whole hour segment on this, is that the ketogenic diet um, is sometimes helpful in short term for weight loss. The amount of fat in the ketogenic diet is harmful long term for health. And so I know people have had success with weight loss on the ketogenic diet. Weight loss helps improve diabetes parameters and so that's a good thing. Right. However, most people report not being able to continue with right. the ketogenic diet. And if you can't continue with it, all that weight you lost comes back, brings its friends with it, and you're in a worse scenario than you were the first time around. Right, so maybe you will lose weight, but is it more a lifestyle is what you're kind of yes. Um, promoting, yes? Yes, we're yeah. talking about health and overall wellness instead of what will take off mm -hmm. 10 pounds mm -hmm. quickly. Low carbohydrate diets um, really have a hard time sustaining them long term, in addition to the fact that if we're doing low carb, we're not getting great protein and fiber from beans and we're having to limit our fruit and vegetable intake and anytime yeah. we do that we risk long-term health. Yeah. So I, I think the, the takeaway here is right um, really a lifestyle and cooking yes. healthfully and eating healthfully is going to be uh, help you overall for long term rather than short term fixes. Right and it helps with weight management in addition to disease yeah. management. So great so, question thank you for asking that question. and um, Dr. Bolton is a PhD in nutrition and um, she's studied these things extensively, so we appreciate your Absolutely. insight here. Thank you. So while we're talking, I dumped in that can of no sodium added okay. tomatoes. They were in a can. I opened them up. Um, easy peasy. I now have dumped in um, frozen kale. Here's a little more frozen now, kale. Now, what if you don't like kale? So lots of people think they don't like kale because they didn't break it into pieces. Um, they didn't make it small enough the first time they ate it. Okay, so that's a trick. Make yeah. it into really small pieces. Break it into small pieces. And what pieces you did is you had, it, already made you had it frozen, pieces. yes? I had it frozen because one of the things that I get asked regularly by patients, by students, by clients, by people on the street, everywhere once they find out <laughs> they I'm a dietitian. They just stop on the street? <laughs> they do. If they know I'm a dietitian on the plane, um, wherever, is how do, I make, I, know, how do I make my food healthful but make it 
in a reasonable time period. We love to cook on the weekends. We will take a whole afternoon on Saturday to do something great. I can't do that on a Thursday right. night. Yeah, you've got to get this yeah. done right. So, okay, so if you don't think you like kale, it's because maybe they're not in small enough pieces. Look yes. how little this is. So it's literally chopped very finely. And this, she bought this frozen, mm -hmm. but if you were going to do it fresh, look how small they have to be in order for it. Now, is there a substitute if you really don't like kale? Yeah, absolutely. So you can skip it all together. Just take um, it out of there. You could add any variety. You could add spinach. Spinach, spinach. is fantastic in here. Um, you could kale... also buy frozen spinach and okay. you then get your green leafy and you may like that flavor better. Yeah. But yeah. you chose kale because it's a superfood, huh? It is a superfood, although I want to tell you that everything we put in here could be considered a superfood. Okay. Really packed full of antioxidants. Great. But berries are, are considered superfood because they really have so many antioxidants. We wouldn't put berries calorie. in our soup, though, not would we? Not today. Okay, no. not today. We're going to talk about berries next week when we talk about <laughs> cancer. Okay. Yeah. Deal. But our kale really does have a lot of nutrients, a lot of phytochemicals, a lot of fiber. Yeah almost no calories yeah right yeah, it's good our, for you our whole bag of kale so try it uh, try and yeah. chop it finely and, yes. and if you really still don't like it you can substitute you something. can substitute yeah. it try spinach okay what's try next that goes in here um, it looks like you have something here yes so this is unsalted vegetable stock it okay. doesn't matter what brand it is but it's unsalted vegetable stock you can also save all of your leftover pieces when you're cutting vegetables and make your own vegetable stock and we've done that before okay but again on a thursday night um, I am using some unsalted vegetable stock from a carton. That's, that sounds like something I would do. Yeah, and it, and it tastes delicious. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. What's so next? So then um, we're going to let this cook. If we're cooking it on the stove top, we're going to let it cook for four hours. Okay. If we're cooking it on the slow cooker, then we're going to let it cook for eight hours on low. Okay. Um, then when we come home, it's going to be delicious. We also added a pinch of rosemary in here when you and I were chatting. Um, so a pinch of rosemary in Pinch there. of rosemary. Yeah. That's your, your seasoning. Yeah. And when I take my rosemary, I, um, I didn't today, but I want to break it into pieces so the flavor comes out of the rosemary. Gotcha. Um, and then after four hours on um, enough to make it simmer mm -hmm. with a top on it mm -hmm. um, on the stove top or eight hours in the slow cooker, it's ready. Okay, good. Yeah. And so does it look like this? It is looks this, like this. So we have we have a prepared, the magic of uh, TV. Oh, I forgot to tell you one tell last Tell me something. Step. Yeah. Um, when we're done, we take two cups out and we puree it or we use an emuls immersion blender. Oh, that's um, how it got that's thick how like we got this. Some yeah, see how nice yeah. and thick it is? Yeah. So you take two cups out. Two cups out. And you blend it. Blend it in the blender or the food in. processor, pour it back in, mix it up. Okay, very That's good, and it gives it this really nice soup. thickness. Yeah. Now, you know, I know this is good uh, for vegetarians because it doesn't have any meat product in it at all. Right. So that's important, too. You um, often talk to us about eating a largely plant-based diet. So if you make half of your plate plants mm -hmm. most days of the week, most meals most days of the week, that's a great rule. Um, if I go home, if I have done half. this. Half. Half your plate, yeah. Okay. But I know a lot of people will say the same thing that I say. If I go home and tell my husband that we're going vegan, vegetarian, we're going mostly plant-based. You'll get a big veto. I'll get a big veto. Yes. So what I do is I try at least two nights a week to cook something that doesn't have meat in it. We can call it meatless Monday, whatever you want to do. Um, however, you want to make sure you do this that. This is a good way because it's hearty. This is great. No one even notices. I don't even tell and them. And what would you no serve with this? I would serve... Um, a whole wheat beautiful roll, this beautiful bread. bread. So here at Cook Street today, they had a professional class, um, and they made these great. Isn't that quick gorgeous? Bread. I mean, they made some quick breads. They made some um, breads. They made some beautiful stuff today. They were wrapping up when I we came know. in today. It, it smells amazing. amazing here. Yeah. If you guys, uh, too bad you can't smell. So that's what I would serve with it: some yeah. type of bread, a whole grain, another high in fiber item. Um, we're just going to put a little lemon juice over the top, oh, right, just to give it a uh -huh. little acidity. Okay. It gives it a little citrus kind yeah, of flavor. Okay, too. am I ready? Can I You're taste ready. it? You're ready. Right. And I, I think we've got We have a guest taster. Yeah, so, Lindsay, Lindsay, if you want to come Lindsay in here, taste she's correct. really the judge, okay? I know. Uh, Does it make me a little nervous? She's actually the, the owner of, of, um, of Cook Street. Street. Taste our food. So, Lindsay, welcome. We're going to have you taste. I'm going to, you know, I can't be outdone, so I'm going to yeah. have some food Cheers. too. Ready? Thank you. This looks amazing. You are welcome. Good. So, high in fiber, high in antioxidants. This is really good. That's yeah. good. And we had, really we had talked about you could add a little heat to it if that's if you needed a little more flavor. Hot sauce? Well, or you could cook it with a little red pepper mm. um, flake in it. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you put the red pepper flake in early um, so it develops mm. some flavor over time instead of just putting it on the top. 
Yeah. It's really yeah, good. That's fantastic. Yeah. More garlic, more onion, whatever, whatever suits your taste buds as long as we're not over salting it and kind of defeating some of the low sodium purposes here. And this is a really great recipe for a weeknight and it's delicious. It has all sorts of good things in it for you. We're going to post that recipe for you so you can make this on your own. Tell us how it, it turns out. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, we want to thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Bolton. Thank, thank you, you, Lindsay. And um, we're going to sign off here, um, but again, we want to remind you that um, really support for this program is brought to you by Cook Street, and we want to thank you, Lindsay, for, for helping us with that. This is really important uh, information, and we are going to skip next week, and then we're going to be back with another recipe. Can you give us a tease on what it's going to be, Dr. Bolton? What's our recipe next week? So we're going vegetarian again next really? week. Really? Trying to get in a bunch of fruits and vegetables. We're doing a risotto that's made with cauliflower. And it's good. And we're going to be talking about that. That's good if you're you concerned about the cancer. If you're or concerned the, about cancer, if you have a family risk cancer. of cancer, if you've had cancer and you're trying to prevent a reoccurrence. Okay. Fruits and vegetables are your very best friends. There's your tea. So tune in, and if you need this recipe, go to uh, the 9healthfair.org website, or you can watch us on Facebook. Thanks. Thank you.